Hello there guys, it's Coolfox over here and today I'm bringing you an unboxing and review of the Mage G GK710 keyboard and mouse combo. So on the front here you have the Mage G logo and obviously the model number of the keyboard. On the sides you have barely anything written except for the logo and on the back you have a schematic of the keyboard and the mouse and obviously some specifications listed. So here it states that there are 7 different backlighting effects and you can toggle through these by pressing the FN button and the escape button. It has the classic 104 button layout so this is a full keyboard and there are also 10 additional multimedia buttons such as the pause, play, volume up and volume down and so on. We will take a look at that obviously later on in the video. You also have a function here where you can switch to game mode and other than that you have two other different languages written down. So opening up the box you will find them inside of a styrofoam bag. As you can see taking off the styrofoam you are greeted with the keyboard and obviously the mouse on the side here. But we will take a look at these later and first we will briefly go through the manual. So as you can see there are a lot of different languages here but obviously we will focus on the English version. All it states here is that there are 7 different lighting effects on the mouse itself. It also has 6 levels of DPI which are 600, 800, 1200, 1600, 2400. So it is using an optical mouse module so this is pretty common in these cheap mice. So this is what you should expect at this price. It also has 7 buttons in total which we will go through and the cable is around 1.6 meters long so it is plenty long for your PC needs. And now going through the keyboard settings again there are a lot of languages here listed but all there is written is the same thing as on the back of the box and also the layout for the multimedia function keys and what they correspond to. So now taking a look at the keyboard here you can see that it is packaged very nicely here with a bit of plastic on the sides to avoid scratching. The whole keyboard is in black and the back plate here is glossy black while the keys are matte black. So obviously some will be fans of the glossy black and the matte black combo but I for one do not like glossy black that much because it attracts a lot of fingerprints and also as you can see it is very reflective which can be very annoying. But apart from that the keyboard has a very good layout. You can see that it does have the small shift key here because this is a UK layout and also the big enter button. There might also be a US layout which if there is I will leave a link down in the description below. But apart from that you have a big space bar here which is great to see and also you have some lightings here for the numpad, the caps lock, the scroll and also the windows lock key so these are very useful. And up here you have the multimedia button keys which are also very useful such as the volume plus and volume minus pause, play and skip tracks, the home button, this is mainly used for your browser, for example Chrome, the desktop button, an email button according to the manual itself, a music search button which I am not sure why it is indicated via the symbol, and also a calculator button. Apart from that, this is obviously a rubber dome keyboard, so this means that this is one of your common keyboards that you can find almost anywhere so this is obviously not mechanical. Pressing the keys you can also tell that it is rubber dome. Although it is rubber dome to be honest it feels quite nice so it has a very spongy feeling to it which is very usual with rubber domes if you know how they look inside. Apart from that the USB cable is not braided which is fine considering the price point and here you have a normal USB type A cable and as you can see it is also pretty long. The mouse here on the other hand does have a braided cable which is obviously nice to see as this is not supposed to tangle as much as the non-braided one but apart from that it feels good in the hands as well and going around it feels really good. The clicks need a very good amount of pressure to them which is great to see so accidental clicks will be very difficult to make. The scroll wheel here has a very good feeling to it as well. The side buttons do feel a bit hollow but overall they feel pretty good as well at this price. And the DPI buttons are also really good so there is nothing much to complain about here. And obviously on the bottom you will find the optical sensor which we will go into more detail later on when we connect these to the computer. When plugging the keyboard into your PC you can see that it will light up automatically. Pressing the FN and escape as shown in the manual will go through the different lighting modes. So here you have breathing, you have off obviously, you have low brightness and also high brightness and then back to the breathing mode. So these are the four settings that I found. I did not find seven by pressing the FN and escape. Now I do not know if there are any more effects but 
these are the only four that I found. Apart from that, as I said before, it is rubber dome, so it will feel just like any other keyboard that you have used before if you never used a Cherry MX keyboard. Most of the cheap keyboards that you find are rubber dome, and to find a Cherry MX or a mechanical switch keyboard at this price is very, very difficult. So keep in mind that this will be just fine for your needs if this is the budget that you have. Here is a quick sound test of how the rubber dome keys sound. So from that small test, you can obviously tell that this is a very quiet keyboard, which is obviously what you should expect with rubber dome keyboards. Putting it in this environment, it has already accumulated dust, and since this is glossy, you can already see the dust, which is not that good. Now something else to point out is that these also light up, and also the multimedia keys work, and they are very useful in fact, so I really like the addition of these. Apart from that, as you can see, up here it does light up as it's supposed to, so num lock, caps lock. It is also very light, which I did not mention before, and this is to be expected as well, since there are only rubber domes underneath the keycaps themselves, so it does not need to be heavy. Apart from that, obviously, if you compare it to something like a mechanical keyboard here, it will be a lot different. Now, this here does cost around $150, and you can see my review of this in the link in the description down below. But basically here, if you listen to this, it will sound a lot different than the rubber dome one that we are reviewing in this video. As you heard from this test, if you need a quiet keyboard, the other one is obviously a lot better for you. But if you have the budget, you can also upgrade to mechanical keyboards, which do not have the blue switches. Something like the brown switch would be more suitable for you if you want a quieter keyboard. Taking a look at the mouse here, you can see that it lights up, just as indicated in the manual. And apart from that, all the buttons work as you would expect. So the DPI button here does change the colors. And obviously, once you reach the limit, you cannot go any further. And then going down, it is the same thing. Once you reach the limit, you cannot go any further. Apart from that, these side buttons also work well. And the same thing goes for the left click and the right click. But I sadly am very disappointed because the sensor here has a bit of a problem because every time you move the mouse it freezes up a bit and this happened to me with a different mouse at a very budget level and I will show you here on this side what is happening exactly and you can tell that it is not really that nice. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. This was Cool Fox, and I'm out. Peace.